Shatterhand. Ein Mann, dessen Schmetterhand weltbekannt ist. Interesting facts about famous people. Let's rewind 60 years to 1963. Westerns released that year. Today, I'm rewinding the clock. 1963 seems like yesterday for many of us now, but it has been 60 years, not an insignificant time frame. I thought this would be a good place to start. Still a good time for Western movies. There are a couple of big movies that came out this year, also a lot of B-movies. But it's interesting to look at where we were then and where we are now. So let's step into our time machine, strap in and go on a ride. If you enjoy this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many other videos, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Let's get into it. Apache Gold, also known as Wenateo. The construction of the Great Western Railroad creates heavy conflict between the railway company and the neighbouring Indian tribes. The construction of the Great Western Railroad creates heavy conflict between the railway company and neighbouring Indian tribes. Worse, criminal gang leader Santa sets his eyes on a gold mine located on holy Indian land and influences the construction supervisor to reroute the planned railroad straight through Apache land. Old Shatterhand, who works as a measurement technician, discovers the evil plan and searches for contact with the Apaches in an effort to avert war. California. Revolutionaries rose up against the Mexican government in California in 1841. If you have nothing else to do or to watch, this is the movie for you. It is an action movie with too little action but it does have a great score and evokes Zorro at certain points, but only momentarily. The story itself is typical of the late 1950s and early 60s. An outsider comes into a local situation, sees the evil in it, and sets about righting wrongs to win the girl in the end. Firearms used by the army and some ranchers were not available in the 1840s. Rifles are from the 1870s, and revolvers were not available until the 1850s. Cattle King, well-armed backers of an interstate cattle trail running from Texas to the Canadian border, run into resistance from Wyoming rancher Sam Brassfield, Robert Taylor, who has accepted and adapted to the reality that what was once an open range has now, 1880s, become increasingly fenced off. His fences are blocking the plan for the cattle superhighway, the main backer of which is Clay Matthews, Robert Middleton, and his hired Texas gunman, Vince Bodine, Richard Devon, who leads a ruthless band out to bring to reality the cattle trail by killing and scaring off any potential resistors. Anybody wants trouble, they'll have it with me. Duello Nel Texas, translation, Jewel in Texas, also known as Gunfight at Red Sands and Gringo is an Italian-Spanish international co-production directed by Ricardo Blasco and Mario Cayano, produced by Albert Band and his first Spaghetti Western. It was also the first Western to feature a score by Ennio Morricone and the second Spaghetti Western to star Richard Harrison. The Gunhawk, gunslinger Rory Calhoun, dispenses his own brand of justice in this action-packed Western adventure co-starring Rod Cameron and Ruta Lee. It's been three years since gunfighter Blaine Madden Calhoun visited his hometown, so when he warns the Sully brothers to stop harassing the town drunk, 
they shoot the old man dead, not realising he's Madden's father, killing them both. Madden is badly wounded by the sheriff, Cameron, but escapes to an outlaw haven where the law fears to tread and prepares what may be his last stand. Gunfight at Comanche Creek. Comanche Creek, Colorado, 1875. Prisoner, Jack Mason, is broken out of jail by a gang of strangers. They use him in a robbery. Then, when the dead or alive reward is high enough, they shoot him and collect. The National Detective Agency, now knowing the gang's methods, arranged to have agent Bob Gifford jailed in Comanche Creek for train robbery. The gang takes the bait, not before Gifford catches the eye of lovely saloon keeper Abby. But how will the bait get off the hook? HUD HUD Bannon is a ruthless young man who tarnishes everything and everyone he touches. HUD represents the perfect embodiment of alienated youth, out for kicks with no regard for the consequences. There is a bitter conflict between the callous HUD and his stern and highly principled father, Homer. HUD's nephew, Lon, admires HUD's cheating ways, though he soon becomes aware of HUD's reckless amorality to bear him any more. In the world of the takers and the taken, HUD is a winner. He's a cheat, but, he explains, I always say the law was meant to be interpreted in a lenient manner. McClintock, George Washington McClintock, GW, to friends and foes alike, is a cattle baron and the richest man in the territory. He anxiously awaits the return of his daughter Becky, who has been away at school for the last two years. He's also surprised to see that his wife Catherine has also returned. She had left him some years before without really explaining what he had done. But she does make the point of saying that she's returned to take their daughter back to the state capital with her. Between his wife, his headstrong daughter, the crooked land agent and the thieving government Indian agent, GW tries to keep the peace and do what is best for everyone. The Pirates of the Mississippi, a western directed by Jürgen Rowland and starring Hans Hogg Felmy, Brad Harris and Sabine Sinjin. A Euro Western. It was a co production between West Germany, France, and Italy, based on the 1847 novel by Frederick Gerstarker. The film was the first pairing of Brad Harris and Tony Kendall, with Gianfranco Parolini as a second unit director. Kendall reprised his role of Chief Black Eagle in Black Eagle of Santa Fe, 1965. Savage Sam, a Western sequel to Old Yeller, based on the 1962 novel of the same name by Fred Gibson. Norman Toker directed the live action film, which was released by Walt Disney Productions on June 1, 1963. It did not enjoy the same success of the original. Travis, Alice and Elizabeth are captured by Apaches, while Old Yeller's son, Sam, tracks their trail. Walt Disney thought that Tommy Kirk should have been billed above Brian Keith in the credits because he had more screen time and the film represented some of the young actor's best work. Showdown. Chris Foster and Bert Pickett are two drifters who are passing through the border town of Adonde. There, a drunken Bert gets into a brawl at a card game and punches the town sheriff. Chris tries to help Bert get away, but the sheriff arrests both men. The town doesn't have a jail, and the sheriff usually chains the prisoners by the neck to a wooden post in the town square. Bert and Chris, wearing iron collars around their necks, are chained to the post. Also chained to the same post are the town trunk and the violent gang of famous wanted outlaw, Laval. The outlaws have more to lose than Bert and Chris, who only have to serve a few days chained to the post. Therefore. Lavelle and his men start digging around the post to free themselves. Unfortunately, they also force Bert and Chris 
to participate in the escape attempt. The Raiders, a group of seven West Texas ranchers, poverty-stricken by the just-concluded Civil War, headed by John G. McElroy, Brian Keith, a former colonel in the Confederate Army, attempt to drive their cattle herds from Texas to the railhead at Hayes City, Kansas. They encounter trouble at the borders of Six Nations Indian Country in the Territory of Oklahoma, convinced that they must have an extension of the rail line to Texas. They continue to Hayes City to demand it. The manager of the Kansas and Pacific Railroad is behind schedule in building tracks to Pueblo, Colorado, and refused to do anything for the Texans. Well, nobody ever accused Texans of being overpatient, Captain. Hello to any new viewers on my channel. Thanks for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Don't forget to hit the notification button to get my new videos. Share with your friends. Drop me your comments. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.